The rift in Kaduna State over the high debt profile left by former governor Nasir El Rafai has generated considerable tension in the state. Supporters of El Rafai and that of the current governor, Malam Obasani, have been at one another's throat, defending their principles and trying to win the hearts and minds of the people of the state. Governor Sani had said his administration is finding it difficult to pay workers' salaries in view of the large amount allocated to debt servicing on a monthly basis. According to Sani, El Rufai left the state with a debt of $507 million, 85 billion naira, and 115 contractual liabilities. But in a swift reaction last Saturday, El Rufai's son Bashir accused the governor of abandoning his official duties to aid and relocating to Abuja. Governor Sani described the attack by Bashiru as a distraction. Meanwhile, the All Progressive Congress, APC, has suspended its woman leader, Mariam Suleiman, for criticizing Governor Sani over this issue. For more on this, let's bring in Muktaro Sirajo, who is immediate past president of Nigeria Institute of Public Relations and one-time chief press secretary, to the former governor of Kaduna State, Ahmed Makarfi. So you're welcome. Mr. Sirajo, how are you doing this evening? Thanks for joining us. I, I am as okay as any Nigerian can be in these days. Okay, you're, you're, you're as happy as any Nigerian can be in this state. Can you explain that? I said I am as okay as any Nigerian can be. As right. most Nigerians can be. Right. Okay, that's good. Thanks for joining us once again. So your state, Kaduna, is in well, the eye of the storm. And um, there's been a lot. If it's not the kidnapping of school children, there's a tussle over how much is available for governance. And um, your governor has been talking about the de high debt profile. You are on ground. Can you share with us the general feeling of what is going on in the state or the current state of affairs? Well, um, the current state of affairs is, as is applicable to all states of the country. The country is in dire straits, and Kaduna State is not an exception. But this brouhaha about uh, date, I don't see any reason why people should be making a storm out of a teacup. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with a governor gathering the stakeholders to keep them up to date about his challenges, about what is going on in the state. I consider it as being proactive and a declaration of liabilities, if you like. Uh, in these challenging times, any governor who finds himself in this kind of dire straits, I think uh, would is better served by coming out clean with the people, telling them the platform upon which he's operating, the challenges that abound. So uh, I don't consider it as uh, Obasani uh, criticizing Nasuru or anything of the sort. I consider it as a proactive act of governance and uh, coming clean with the people. I think people are trying to create a mountain out of a molehill. The other flip side to it is that this statement that the governor made about inheriting about uh, 570 or somewhere around million dollars debt left behind by Nasiru was the same uh, statement that opposition figures made uh, in the countdown to the election, which earned them the wrath of the former governor, uh, deprivations here and there, including uh, uh, revocation of uh, titles of uh, lands of even former governors by Malan Nasiru. So I wonder what he is going to do with Uba now that he has come out to say the same thing, the exact same thing that the opposition figures had complained of before he left office. Right. And come to think of it, the, uh, I believe the former governor is being served a dose of his own medicine because this was somebody who, before he became governor, had abused the hell out of all the governors that preceded him 
for plunging the state into a cesspool of debt. And uh, to think that all the debt that he was complaining about, including putting a figure of the indebtedness of the state on each citizen of the state. Uh, by the time he came, the debt that he inherited was some, uh, according to the debt office, some $93 million, which one of the governors that uh, he succeeded actually had a problem with. Because from our sources, it was actually $83 million, yes. okay. he, which he inherited. And he was all over himself complaining about how the state was plunged into this kind of indebtedness. And oh. to think that the same person who made that complaint has now left the state with $574 million, which is about 600% of that $83 million. I, I, I think uh, it's uh, Baker's belief. And uh, I think it is a, an episode that we should uh, get out of as fast as possible. Oh, okay. but let me repeat that the governor calling stakeholders to a meeting, telling them what challenges he is facing and uh, uh, his liabilities is in the best, uh, uh, what you, if, you, if you like, an exhibition of uh, proactive and good uh, governance. Oh, okay, so uh, let, let's meet Mr. One thing, excuse me, one thing that the governor may, might not have told uh, people, if my sources are correct, is that even on the eve of the departure of the former governor, a 20 billion naira loan was uh, procured from Zenith Bank, uh, mortgaging the entire IGR of the state. Uh, so, to all intents and purposes, now the state government, apart from the fact that it left those uh, multi-million dollar debt, the state government does not even have an IGR to fall back on. Okay, uh, okay, thank you. Can I come in here, I have Mr. Sirajo? I please ask me a uh, question. Uh, Let me answer it uh, yeah, appropriately. We, we, so have, time, we have time, we have time to talk. We have time to talk and we have a lot of things to touch on. So don't worry. Well, it is we'll, better we'll to that. one question qualitatively rather than answering 10 questions without making mm, sense. Yes, don't worry. We have time. Don't worry. So let, let's let's go to the to okay. next question. Yes. So let's come to the substance of the argument here. Um, we have some figures here. The actual figures are 587 million dollars, 85 billion naira, and um, 115 contractual liabilities. In view of this, uh, Malam Sani says, 7.5 billion naira has been deducted from Kaduna federal allocation for March, so leaving the state with 3 billion naira. And, okay, I think we lost him. Okay, you're there. So well, leaving, the state, leaving yeah. the state with 3 billion naira, and um, you have 5.2 billion monthly wage bill for Kaduna State. So should these numbers, should it worry citizens of Kaduna State? Well, any right, any right thinking person should be worried. Because if you deduct 7 billion out of 10, which is 70%, and you have a wage bill of 5 billion, it means even the uh, routine payment of monthly wage bill, the government is not able to do. So where does it have the funds to do more important and more fundamental programs of uh, development? In fact, the mystery that uh, I think the people of the state uh, deserve an answer from, from the governor is that with this uh, humongous deductions, how, is he, how has he been able to be paying some past... Uh, uh, nine, ten months that he has been here. Because from the statistics we gather, for the next four, five years, the average monthly deduction for Kaduna State Government, uh, on account of the debt that Nasiri left for uh, the state with, is going to be five, six billion naira every month. Yes. So how the governor is going to survive, how the governor is going to work for the people with this paucity of funds uh, uh, is, is something that uh, really should be disconcerting and should be a source of worry for not only the people of Kaduna State, but for Nigerians wherever they are. Oh, okay, so, um, I mean, his opponents have said that he definitely needs to increase the internally generated revenue. But he also says that on a monthly basis, 800 million Naira is already being deducted from the IGR account in order to pay contractors. Definitely, the governor is under immense pressure. Don't you think so? No doubt about that. He's under immense pressure. 
uh, and uh, he needs to be smart, and uh, the entire state needs to rally around him to see how we all can get out of this quagmire that we have been uh, plunged into. It is not a question of politics. Uh, political season is gone. This is time for governance. And uh, if we don't all come together and see how we can get the state out of this quagmire, I think the story is going to be terrible. It's already terrible, but it may be more terrible. And this was what I was alluding to when I said a very huge percentage of even the uh, IGR, which they touted for ad infinitum, that they had improved the IGR uh, tremendously, that had been mortgaged at the altar of uh, a loan that was procured just at the, as the last government was at the departure lounge. So you, 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 don't, you don't understand some of these things, actually. But is, is the governor giving excuses because he asked for the job? He is on the job, and then he has to be creative and find ways to solve this problem. I think he already said that I he was going to try to restructure the loan. I, I think it, it will serve him better. It will serve him well, and it will serve the people of Kaduna State better if he stops whining and goes to work trying to look for solution to the problem. And this is where I will appeal not only to him, but to the entire people of the state. Like I said, it is not about politics anymore. It is, well, it is not about partisanship anymore. It is about the state. Uh, some people, I don't know if it has been uncharitable, but the truth of the matter is that this debt that we are into, this governor was very central in facilitating the procurement of the loan. But then you don't blame him for facilitating the procurement of the loan because it is one thing to facilitate the procurement of the loan and it is quite a different thing how that loan is deployed and how uh, repayment is uh, structured. But the governor asked for this job. Yes, we understand that he is working in a very, very challenging environment, financial and otherwise, social, political, economic, all sorts of challenges are there, but he believed he could do it. He believed that he could withstand the heat in the kitchen. So it is up to him to guard his loins, uh, pull off his sleeves and go to work. But the truth of the matter is that this governor inherited a very humongous liability that is capable of distracting any sane human being. But then it is not beyond uh, looking for and finding solutions. And I believe right. uh, solu solutions abound, even though they are not going to be easy to come by. And uh, one of the things to do is to continue to engage the citizens of Kaduna State, just like he has uh, started with this uh, town hall meeting, to be regularly keeping the people abreast of what is going on, challenges and prospects. And uh, one way or the other, some solutions are likely to, to come in. Uh, okay. Because every administration that has preceded him has had its own kind of uh, challenges. And uh, if I will give him my cobos piece of advice is, uh, he has to really learn from some of his predecessors who were actually proactive in telling the people, coming out with figures for the people, this project cost this at this rate, it has been given to this and that. But these past eight years, none of the projects that were undertaken in Kaduna State has any cost to it. Nobody in Kaduna State can tell you that this is the cost of this or that uh, project. And I think that is uh, something that is can no longer be acceptable by the people of the state. They have been beaten more than once, and uh, now it's time for some action. Well, Mr. Sirajo, you, you made a very good point when you mentioned that the current governor uh, was part of negotiating or facilitating uh, those loans. Some of them are World Bank loans. He, he used to work as a, an advisor to uh, the former governor, Nasir El Rafai, and he was also in the Senate. But that's not the issue. The issue is that the cost of the borrowing you know, or debt services has gone very high because of the cost of dollars. You know, so that's where the problem lies. 
So, do you think... No, I don't believe I don't believe the cost of dollars has anything to do with it because it is a percentage stuff. Whatever you, whatever loan you took, there is a certain percentage that uh, uh, determines the servicing leverage of it. What I'm saying is part of the thing that the governor needs to do is to reorder his priorities, actually. The, 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 the appeal to the people of the state to understand the situation that he is in and I believe he will not lack listening ears from the government. It is not yet election time. It is not yet partisanship time. Now it is time for governance. We all wish the governor success because if he fails, we all fail. But he needs to reorder his priorities. For instance, in this crunch time, with all respect to him, I think uh, building a 7 billion naira conference or banquet hall for government house should not be his priority. But in any case, you don't just you don't get everything right all the time. But I believe he has started well by calling the people together to tell them what is on ground so that it will be probably to explain rationale for failure. And I think that is not good enough. Okay, so this issue has degenerated to a war of words. Um, a little bit murky. So the, the, the son of the former governor, Bashir El Rafai, you know, came swinging at Malam Obasani and he accused him of sleeping most times or living literally in Abuja instead of Kaduna. Is this a fair assessment of Malam Obasani or the situation of things in Kaduna? Well, I don't know if he, if he abandons Kaduna for Abuja because I don't track his uh, movement. I know we have a governor of Obasani and I know that... Uh, Whatever other political disagreements one may have with him is the fact that the statement he made at the town hall meeting is not a lie. So what I want us, we should not be chasing shadows. Let us address the issues that Governor Obasani raised at the town hall meeting. Is, was what he said not true? Did Nasir Erufai not leave a debt of close to $58 million when all he, in, uh, sorry, $500 $80 million, when all he inherited and was making a lot of, of noise over was uh, less than $90 million. If we establish the fact that what the governor said is true, then we should address the issue. The bit about him living in Abuja or living on the moon, I think, is, uh, is, 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 is chasing shadows. Right. So Bashir is not going scot-free anyway. You know, the, the governor's uh, people have also come after him, um, asking for his head, you know. So for instance, there's a politician and activist by name, Honorable Ibrahim Amadou. He, he literally blasted Bashir and he, he called him, he said, you know, what he's saying is unguarded, a stupid, and that his vituperations are unacceptable uh, to the people of Kaduna. What do you think about that? That, I believe, is their internal affair, and I believe I'm not competent to delve into that. Insulting one another just because of, um, of what? Because of politics, on the name of politics. Well, they are the same family. How are they the same family? Yeah. How are they the same family? Is this about family, or is it about focusing on government work or what needs to be done. No, no I mean, it is, it, it is the same political family fighting itself. So I said, I don't belong to the family and I believe it is not my place to delve into that. I'm not competent to do that. Right. But what I'm saying is, whether it is a family thing or not a family thing, the truth of the matter is that 580 million debt has been left for this current government. And for God's sake, if he cries out loud over it, he should be understood. Right. So let's go quickly. We have a few minutes left. Let's go quickly to Kaduna generally. I know that you were you used to work under the former governor, Ahmed Makarfi. And then during his time, there was largely peace in Kaduna state. But for the past, you know, previous eight years under Governor Nasir al rafai Kaduna was the epicenter of violence and ethnic tensions you know, in northern Nigeria, you know, political conflict, because of the diversity, uh, there seemed to have not been a balance. So I want to ask you, how, what did you do differently under Governor McCarthy that made the people feel like, you know, there was, um, there was a kind of peace and ease 
among uh, different ethnic groups and people of uh, different religions? Well, what we did was that as soon as elections were over, we got into governance. And governance was blind to partisanship. Governance was blind to ethnicity. Governance was blind to religious differences. And Kaduna is such a complex state that you have to be very, very fair-minded to be able to steer the affairs of the state. So I wish you had asked somebody that will be seen to be more neutral this question because of where I am coming from. I mean, in any case, it was not only Magarifi that I worked under. I worked under seven governors of Kaduna State. Yes, he was the last governor as, uh, that I worked under. And the secret behind the relative peace and security that we enjoyed in Kaduna in the eight years that he was governor was that he was a very, very fair-minded governor who didn't, who believed that the entire state was his constituency. He didn't believe that simply because he was a Muslim and came from the northern part of the state, the other parts of the state uh, did not matter in his calculations. No, he was one governor that, uh, at the risk of being immodest, touched the lives of all the 23 local government areas of the state. I was, I know I authored a number of publications while we were in government. Uh, during which we tried to come clean with the people. That was what I was alluding to when I was talking. And I believe that succeeding governors need to take a leaf from that so that people know where they stand with the government. There was no project that was done that the people were left in the dark as to how much it cost. And there was no local government under Makarifi, the eight years that Makarifi was governor, that did not have one project of the government or the other. Unlike some other people who have made a lot of noise and concentrated development in Kaduna and some four urban local government areas. If you ask anybody under the leadership of Makarifi, any local government will point to a project that is in continuously impacted positively on the lives of the people. Some other governors cannot boast uh, of that. But to answer your question, the reason why there was relative peace and security under Magarifi was because Magarifi was fair-minded and he considered the entire state his constituency and he tried to govern fairly, equitably, and justly. Okay, okay. So one last question before you go. Um, since the death of former governor, Mr. Patrick Yakoa, I mean, there used to be an agreement that the governor was a Muslim and the deputy governor a Christian and then something happened to the governor Patrick Yakoa became a governor and then he died since that time the arrangement has been changed from Nasir El Rafai it's been a Muslim governor and a Muslim deputy governor do you first and then under this current administration is the same thing a Muslim governor a Muslim deputy governor do you see this changing anytime soon and do you think it should change in order to take into consideration the diversity of that state? I believe, I am one of those that believe primordial considerations should not come into governance. We should elect our leaders on the basis of what they can offer. And uh, what faith you adhere, what God you worship, what ethnic background you belong to, should not matter when we come to uh, elect, electing our people. In fact, that is part of the reason why we have the kind of med mediocrity that we have been having. But I believe that all parts of the state must have, must be given as of right, a sense of belonging. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Mukhtar Sirajo, for that excellent interview. Um, Mukhtar Sirajo is the immediate past president, Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, and former Chief Press Secretary to Governor Ahmed Makarfi in Kaduna State. Thank you so much for your time. No, I was, I was not his Chief Press Secretary. I was Director General here under him. Okay, okay. That's noted. Thank you very much. All the same.